Automating your garage doors makes a lot of sense. I've already done two videos on how to make your garage doors more smarter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a D1 Mini in your car to have your garage doors opening and closing when you want them to. And the best part is, you don't ever have to even think about them or touch anything. Because sometimes, pushing a button is just so hard. All the credit for this idea goes to Adarusha. He's got some really cool projects on GitHub. This one, the MQTT car presence, was even featured on Hackaday. And thanks to John Bohm, hope I said that right, for showing it to me. Now here's how it works. These are the things you're gonna need. A D1 Mini, regular or pro with the antenna. A micro USB to male type two USB connector, or just a cable. Some kind of container to keep the D1 Mini from getting stuff spilled on it in your car. You're gonna need the Arduino IDE, and of course, Home Assistant. You can find Adarusha's instructions on his GitHub page. For his setup, he used a D1 Mini Pro with an external antenna to extend the range. I used a plain D1 Mini and it works great. I'll come back and say something about the range towards the end. For the container, Adarusha has a really cool 3D printed box you can download and print if you have access to a printer. Or there's a lot of other D1 Mini boxes on Thingiverse. I really like this one. And I'm always thinking about those poor folks that don't have access to a 3D printer yet. For this project, you could use something like a Tic Tac box. That would work. Now for the software. Head to Adarusha's GitHub page and download everything. Extract it and then open up the MQTT carpresence.ino file. There are a few things up here at the top that you need to customize. Your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. Your MQTT broker, IP address, user, and password. And the MQTT node. If you're going to make more than one of these, the MQTT node needs to be unique for each one. If you only have one garage door, you don't have to change it. And you don't really need to change the discovery prefix either, but you can if you want to. If you do, you have to change something else later, but that's fine too, right? These are the libraries that you need to make sure are included in your Arduino IDE. Now, if you've flashed a Sonoff before, then you should be ready to go. But if you haven't, then you do need to make a change to one of your Arduino libraries. In your Arduino's library folder, navigate down until you find this pubsubclient.h file. Open that up, with Visual Studio Code or Notepad++ and find the line where it defines the max packet size. That needs to be set to 512. Now, like I said, if you've ever flashed a Sonoff in the past, you've already changed that to 512 or on the newest version of Tasmoda, you have to even make it 1024. But if you haven't done that, you need to do it for this project. So do it now. Once you've got all that done, head to your tools menu and make sure that all of your settings look like this. Now connect your D1 Mini and then select the port that shows up right after you connect it. Then hit upload. Now I'm using this tight little D1 mini case that I really like and this really short micro USB connector. I actually had to trim off the ends of it to get it to fit in this box. Once you've got this assembly all set up, we're ready to test it. But before we do, we need to set it up in Home Assistant. First thing we need to do is go to configuration.yaml file, either through the configurator and ator or through whatever code editing software you like to use. Go to the MQTT section and add these two lines, discovery true and discovery prefix Home Assistant. If you changed the discovery prefix in the Arduino sketch, then you need to change it here too so that they match. Once you're done with that, save it and restart Home Assistant. Now plug in your D1 Mini. In a few seconds, the blue light will start flashing like crazy. This sketch is genius. It adds itself as an entity to Home Assistant. I didn't even know you could do that. Once you got the D1 Mini powered up, open Home Assistant, go to your states page, and you'll find a new binary sensor called Car Presence. Once you see that, you're ready for the next step. Now we need to create two automations. I like using the automations editor because it gives you a little bit of guidance. And for me at least, I make less mistakes when I use it. The first automation is triggered when the D1 Mini connects to your network, which happens when you first turn on your car in your garage or when you return home from some voyage hither. When the D1 Mini connects to your network, Home Assistant will check to see if the garage door is open or closed. If it's closed, it will open it. The second automation is triggered when the D1 Mini disconnects from the network. This will happen when you've pulled into the garage and turned off your car, or when you've left your house and you've driven far enough away that the D1 Mini can no longer connect to your network. When that happens, Home Assistant will check the state of your garage door, and if it's open, it will close it. Adarusha's got it set up with a one minute delay to give you time to get out of your car, maybe get the groceries out or something else before the garage door comes down. You can modify that if you like. If you have two garage doors, you'll need two sets of these automations and the entity ID for the cover and the name for the binary sensor will be different. If you want to just add the automations to your configuration.yaml or your automations.yaml the old-fashioned way, this is what it should look like. Make sure the entity ID matches your garage door entity ID in Home Assistant and also make sure that the binary sensor 
matches what you put for MQTT node in the Arduino sketch. Once you've got the automations done, reload automations and go and install the D1 Mini in your car. It's important that you plug the D1 Mini into an outlet in your car that turns off when your car is off. Some of your outlets won't do that. So with the car off, if you plug in the D1 Mini and it turns on, then find another outlet. In our cars, we had one USB outlet that stayed on when the car was off, but thankfully we had a different one that turns off when the car's off. When you've got it plugged into the right outlet, it's time to test it out. Unfortunately, in this case, there's a very low likelihood that anything will explode. Sorry. Now, if all that worked, this is what you'll have. Okay, we're testing the car presence. Starting the car, we're just turning it on, not starting the engine. And there it goes. Garage door's opening, so now I'm gonna start it all the way. There it goes, starting to close. Okay. Okay, now we drive back to the house. And there it goes. Opens on its own right about the time we're getting to the door. That is so perfect. I guess maybe it could open a few seconds earlier. If I had the, the, the D1 Mini Pro with the antenna, it would probably open a few seconds earlier. Okay, turn the car off and we'll get in. Now coming back to the range and the difference between the D1 Mini and the D1 Mini Pro. For us, I think the D1 Mini is the right choice. Our router is pretty strong and we can be quite far away before the garage door starts to close. In fact, too far to look back and make sure that it actually has closed. So if the range were extended even farther, it would be really hard for us to be sure that the garage door had actually closed when we'd driven away. Now on the flip side of that, with just the plain D1 Mini, it doesn't connect to the network soon enough. So often, we'll sit in the driveway for a few seconds, waiting for it to connect before it'll open the garage door. So there's a little bit of give and take, no matter which one you choose. It's gonna depend a lot on each unique situation. So you do what's right for you. So other than that little bit of issue with the range, it's been working perfectly. And it's another high score on the WAF scale. Well, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful to you. Until next time, adios.